So my chosen pattern for to show of Karen's designs is this. It's called the gift box placemat. Um, and I picked this one because not only is it fun, it's unique, it's different, and it's the kind of thing that you can make a whole set of them in an afternoon and then give them as a gift and you'll look really cool. You wanna know why? One, because I've picked out fabric that's gonna make you look cool. And two, Karen's given you a technique that people are gonna go, ooh, how'd you do that? The other reason I picked this was because there's a lot of things I can show you for tips and tricks on this pattern uh, to get better success than just, you know, kind of going through this. This is the project that I made. So this is a placemat. It already is finished. There is usable fleece inside. And the um, secret little Easter egg is that the bow here is a 3D bow. So it gives it this really neat finished. And then look at how cool this fabric is. This middle part is actually metallic fabric. So you know how when you buy fabric that has metallic on it, the paint that's on top is a little bit shiny and it's just a little crisp. This fabric, the whole fabric is covered in that sort of paint. So it makes a nice crisp bow and it pops really nice. This is a really good time to pull out your rotating cutting mat. That's because we are going to use the Crazier 8 um, ruler design set. This is one of those ruler sets that's like, seriously, what, how many things can I possibly make with all of these weird shapes? Well, let me tell you how many. First of all, I like to buy, I have this set in my stash just because I want that kite shape. That kite shape is just the right shape to do lots of different size kites. And it's easy to use because it's got the no slip grip on it like, um, like Creative Grids always uses. This is also a tool that I use a lot, this C block. So by the time you buy a kite block, you might as well buy the whole ruler set. First thing I'm gonna give you some tips on. Karen gives you all of the size cutting instructions. There's only two size blocks that you cut out of the fabric to begin with. So the first thing that you're gonna do is, and all of these measurements are in the pattern instructions, so you can get those off of there. Karen tells you where to mark your cutting lines for this first block and I'm going to mark my lines as the pattern says from here to here and here to here and we're just going to cut it now another tip for this project is I like a 28 millimeter blade because we're going to be doing a lot of turning and cutting small pieces so this is really handy First thing I'm going to tell you is when you put these two rectangles together, layer them right sides up. You want these shapes to be the same. And now you have identical shapes from your rectangle block. That's the first bit. I'm going to show you the cutting tips off of this fabric and we're going to show you the putting it together tips off of the other fabric. Now we get to the part where we're going to cut up these weird um, Crazy 8 templates. The pattern tells you what size to cut these squares and out of which fabric to cut them from, so I've already done that. The pattern tells you to cut four of these squares. You actually only need two, so there's another tip for you. The pattern tells you to cut four of shape B and four of shape E out of this fabric. Now, in my kit, I did fat eights instead of long strips. So you're gonna be able to get this size E easier than I am right now, but I'm gonna make it work. Make sure that your fabric is uh, facing this the right way, okay? So, so what I typically do with this, since we're gonna cut four of this shape, I'm just gonna cut one at a time for you. The reason I like my rotating mat is because you're gonna wanna cut every single um, nook and cranny off of this template. Even this tiny little bit over here. Make sure you cut everything. All right. 
Now, when we cut our other shapes, our other, most of our shapes are going to come out of this big fabric because this is our background, our gift wrapped fabric, if you will. Okay. Now we want four of each of these as well. The reason for that is because we're going to make two placemats out of this whole thing. So if you're going to make two, you might as well cut all the fabric at once. Again, I try to accommodate my fabric the best I can. So if I want to cut four of these and I've got two layers, I really only need two. So I'm going to lay mine this way and I'm going to take my regular ruler and cut a strip off. Okay, because I can get this one this way and this one this way. When you're cutting this shape, just this shape, she tells you to cut shape D, which is this one, but she tells you to cut it in reverse, okay? Um, so there's two ways you can do this. You can either take your template and flip it over, but if you do that, now all your grippy is not on there. This slides around. If you use it right, right side down, it sticks better. So I don't want to flip it over and cut it. I want my grippy to stick down. So what I'm going to do for this, for this shape is cut, I'm going to cut myself, I want to cut all four of these. So I'm going to cut myself two strips that will fit this size. So now I want to make sure that I lay these all going the same direction. Since I want my template cut in reverse, I'm going to cut it from the wrong side of the fabric. The first set that you put together, and the other reason that I like doing these videos is because, like I said, my brain is upside down and backward. Looking at diagrams sometimes is harder for me than it should be. So I, I feel like watching an actual layout or an actual um, video of how things go together is really helpful. So Karen gives you a diagram of how to lay everything out, which is really helpful. So here's piece A, here's piece B, here is piece C. So that's the first section of our first block. Okay, so here's the top. So this, here's the reason that we have these engineered points. When you line this up to here and up to here, that blunted off end up here makes it, makes putting this quarter inch seam allowance much easier. So what I do is I lay my pieces all out and I pin them and I go back and forth one at a time. This end also has an engineered point. So this end lines up too. Do you ever put things together with templates and then you have these weird dog ends off the ear, off the ends and nothing lines up and you don't know where to trim it? You don't have that with this element. Couple of tips when you're sewing your quarter inch seam allowance. I like to use my quarter inch piecing foot but I bump my needle over one notch to the right. That gives me a scant quarter inch. So also notice how I put my pins. I always pin like this. And the reason I pin like this is I don't have to worry about where I'm sewing. I'm not gonna sew over my needles and I don't have to pull them out as I'm sewing either. When you go to your machine, a couple things you wanna pay attention to is when you put your needle down, your needle should go right there at that little point. 
that's the other beauty that's the beauty of those engineered corners because now as i sew on it that quarter inch seam allowance is going to be perfect to where the end of that lines up and another hot tip because Karen always does things with these sorts of shapes where she makes them oversized and then trims them down. It doesn't even matter if it's perfectly straight. You're gonna trim it down and square it up. On every section, we're sewing the gift wrap fabric to an accent fabric. I pressed everything toward my gift wrap fabric. That made everything lay nice and flat. I always set my seam, and yeah, I'm a big fan of steam. So I always set my seam flat and then press it out. Look at how even though we have that really weird angle, it's a straight seam line. So we're gonna do that same technique over and over to make the shape that's in the, in the um, design. We are going to end up with sections that look like this. Since we cut out four of everything, we have two blocks that look exactly like this. These are exactly the same and two blocks that look exactly like this. These are exactly the same, okay? Um, another tip I'm gonna suggest you do when you put these together, because they are a little upside down and reversed and they look kind of mirrored. Do yourself a favor, use the picture right here to lay your blocks out exactly how they are in the picture. Okay, now this is the part where my brain just kind of went, huh? Because we have to take this and get it into here. And that takes a little bit of finagling. Also, again, since I can see things better in motion than in picture, once I did this, I can't see it any other way. So the picture shows you this diagram. Okay, I'm going to take this piece of fabric folded in half and I'm going to set it on top of this piece. Um, hot tip, you'll know you're in the right place because these are going to match. We're going to fold it. The fold is going to go down this way. Take these two and put them together. Now, I'm a fan of pinning more than I am of clips. However, this is a lot of layers to pin through. And I feel like when you're trying to pin through this many layers, things wiggle and they get out of the way and then they break. We're gonna put a quilting clip here, well out of the way of where we're gonna sew because it's gonna hold all those layers together. Way out over here where I'm not pinning through this fold, I'm gonna put a pin out there too. That just kind of holds everything together where I want it to be, okay? Now I'm going to, actually I'm gonna move this clip, I'm gonna move it to the top, because I'm gonna sew this seam here. So I'm gonna put pins out in the corners where they don't really matter to what we're doing, just to hold the block square. We're gonna kinda of manhandle this fabric a little bit, so you might want to back up stitch just at the beginning on this fold. Now, this is where your, your brain's gonna melt just a little bit, but it'll be okay. We need to take these two pieces and unfold them. Now this is why I leave my blocks laid out where they are so that I can see what's happening because in reality what we want to do is take these two pieces and sew them onto here. Okay, So it helped me when I made this the first time to make this block. I put a pin in here just to keep everything where I wanted it to be and then to take it and flip it over so that the sides that are gonna to go together are now together. Because that lets me visualize, right? The whole right sides together thing is how we're all trained. Then I'm gonna take and slide this over, match this part of my bow and this part of my block up. Again, gravity is gonna be a problem because you got so much weight and so many layers Try your best to get this lined up and square before you move anything else. So make sure you got a nice pleasing little pile of fabric here and sew your seam allowance again down that side.
Again, I'm going to back stitch just one or two stitches, just enough to keep that from coming apart as I'm yanking on it. Now here's the magic. When we take this clip all out, what we should have is, a, is four blocks all connected by a bridge. You wanna make sure when you get to here that these are opposite and these are opposite. Now what we have to do is take these blocks and you got this weird thing happening in here, right? It's kind of like a Reverse clamp. This is why I had you backstitch right here because we're gonna have to really get this to lay how we want it, okay? <clears throat> I finagled this a couple different ways to come up with the way I thought was best to do this. What I did, same thing. I like to match up points that don't necessarily matter so that this over here isn't fighting with you when you get to the thing that does matter. So pin these, get them lined up. Okay, and then in the middle, take and spread this open so that it's kind of like a, like a bento box. Then take these seams, and th you'll notice I didn't press this yet, because I wanna take these seams and fold them out to opposite ways to where they are. Okay, so I wanna be in control of which way these seams are gonna go at this point. We're not gonna leave this clip here, but we're gonna put a clip that holds these two seams that are facing opposite directions together. And I like these Quilter Select clips because they're a little bit tighter than the other ones and they'll hold layers a little bit better. Now, so that this turns out the way you really want it to, I like to take my point-to-point um, my -point turner and kind of push that down in there to get that really nice and crisp then keep this really, really crisply folded. Line everything up and get a real crisp fold right there and then pin it. This is about the only time I really pinned through my bow because I really didn't have a way of getting that lined up any differently. And then I pinned here. I'm gonna do the same thing over here this this is a little bit awkward so just take your time and really finagle the fabric to get what you want push your thumb in there and really fold that out to make a crisp fold on this end over here before you clip anything if you end up with a pucker in here you're going to have a pucker in your bow so see how that's got a pucker there and it's less than a quarter inch that's not going to make you happy when you sew it so make sure you pull this out. You really only need that quarter inch seam allowance. It doesn't have to go any further. But see how I fixed that? You don't wanna stitch a pucker into that edge of your bow or it won't look good. Now we're gonna get everything laying flat again. In this center here, there's a whole lot of layers going on. But since I've got these folded out, it lays pretty flat. So I'm gonna sew about halfway up this block before I get to the bow. And I'm gonna stop. Then I wanna get everything as flat as I possibly can in here. And if you take your time, this isn't very difficult. It's just a this part of the process, you just wanna take your time and get things straight. I'm gonna sew to that seam and then I'm not gonna sew past it because I wanna make sure that everything's laying flat and straight all the way across here. And, and because we've got all the fluff in here, it's gonna look like it's crooked, but it's not. Okay, get it good and flat. Sew over that seam and keep on going. You got a present. It's a pretty present. Okay, so now because we took that extra time, look at how we don't have any puckers in our bow points. This is kind of floofy. Couple of tips, if you want this to look really 3D, don't press it. Leave it, leave the edges rounded when you press the rest of your block. But now I'm gonna show you a couple things I learned about pressing. From the back side, I'm gonna decide which way I want everything to lay, and then I'm gonna press it like that. 
If you like to split your seams, you can. I typically don't. And the reason I'm not worried about that on this project is because we're gonna put fusible fleece under it and fusible fleece is gonna fill in any of these cracks that we have. All right, so I'm gonna press this to one side from the back, flip it and press the other seam. The last seam that we're gonna press is that long seam in the middle. Now, since I don't want to press the bow down that much, I fuse my backing fabric to my fleece. So I've got a piece of single-sided fusible fleece. This is what's going to be in your kit. And I'm going to fuse it to my backing fabric. This is not the fabric that comes in your kit. The fabric that comes in your kit is actually Christmas fabric, and I'll show you that in a second. I like to fuse my fleece from the fabric side. And a couple of tips about working with fusible fleece. Fuse it down first and get everything happy. I trim the whole thing at once. So my bow is a little bit bigger than my backing because we want to make this placemat size. Right now it's a square. So I'm going to layer everything and cut it all at once. My backing doesn't really have a middle, it's not directional, so it doesn't really matter where this lays out, it does matter where we cut our bow. The pattern tells you how much to trim it down when it's all done. We want to trim this 13 inches wide, half of 13. I only have a six inch ruler, and I got a six inch ruler on purpose. The reason for that is I wanna show you this trick. If I wanna cut this six and a half, I have a really handy line right down the middle of both of these things. I can take my chalk pen, I can line up my seam with the six and a half on my ruler, this way and this way, okay? Wanna make sure that that line is laying on top of all of my back pieces. And I'm gonna do the same thing this way. and six and a half. And I'm not gonna show you the finishing part of this because you guys have probably all faced something, but I am gonna give you some tips. So you can cut the whole thing now if you choose to, or you can just cut the block. So now my block is 13 and a half. We're gonna do the same thing going the other way and make it 16 and a half. Now I'm gonna take my fused backing and um, fleece and I'm gonna put my placemat right sides down on that. I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around, leave an opening point so that you can turn it Okay, and then we're gonna turn it right way out. Now, when you get to this point where I've turned it right way out, I've pressed it all flat, now I'm gonna steam this. So if you put steam to fusible fleece, it really gets happy, it likes a spa day. How cool is that? All right, how many of you are gonna make some of these? These are really fun.